For the defenders of Kyiv, the battle isn't over. This time it's training, but while the enemy has retreated to the east, the danger still looms. Vlad Nekrutenko was a PhD law student until the Russians tried and failed to seize his city. Do you think it is possible that they could come back? Let's say we lose uh, our positions on Donbass or uh, Lugansk region and uh, then uh, they see that uh, we don't have enough troops and resources to uh, protect uh, Kyiv. Uh, they would come back for their initial aim to take over our um, capital and uh, take over our government. In the forests of Kyiv, we can't disclose where, the 131st Battalion is dug in a crucial line of defence for the capital. How many kilometres oh, or how I many don't, of the know. trenches? Um, 10 kilometres, 20 kilometres, I don't know. Great Britain sent us uh, this weapon. So yes. anti-tank missiles from yes. Britain? Yes, yes. And when was the last time that you used this weapon here? Secret. The Russians were three or four kilometres from us, firing with mortars and artillery. If they return, without our resistance, they could storm through. And they will make an effort to do so again. But I think the residents of Kiev can sleep more soundly, knowing that we are here. A whole infrastructure is in place. Spots where Kiev families would picnic now have new dwellers. Soup. It still feels astonishing to see how a modern European capital has suddenly been taken back to the trench-filled warfare of decades ago. And they're in this for the long haul because they now know that the threat to the very existence of their country will continue. For those dug in, reminders of the life they left behind two months ago, when Russia thought it could barge into Kyiv with little resistance and when Ukraine's residents became its protectors. Mark Lowen, BBC News, Kyiv.